Hello, <clears throat> and welcome to Meditation with Melissa. Oh, I forgot to grab... I want to do something special for today's meditation. I'll be right back. Thank you for your patience. I'm just gathering some things. So, as a life activation practitioner and a healer and a guide, I use many different healing tools. Crystals, Lots of crystals, actually. Lots of different crystals. I have a laser that I can talk about later. Um, right now, I'm unraveling my life activation wand. Because today I want to do a meditation with the wand. I want the wand to lead us in a meditation. And with the wand, I have a very smooth stone, black stone. Reminds me of like a river rock. And then, but it's a crystal. And then a clear quartz crystal. And when you do the life activation, you hold these in your hand. And they work with the energy as they activate your spiritual and physical DNA. The 12 codons on the back of your neck. And I also have a pa pair of spagyrics. Purificato and Crystallis, which are alchemical waters, just waters. You can either ingest them or you can use them as a spray. And when you receive a life activation, you get a pair of the um, Purificato and Crystallis. These help to purify the DNA. The life activation is a session that is essentially like the beginning of a detox for your energetic and physical system. And the Purificado and Crystallis help with that detoxification. It's a clarifying alchemical process. And it takes seven years to complete the entire process of the life activation. Similar to how every seven years you are a new being. Because uh, all of your cells are brand new at that point. So this is just the beginning of a lifelong process, really, because just the first seven years is just the beginning. But the life activation assists with pretty much anything in your life. Uh, you just have to be ready for change and connecting with your divinity in a deeper way. Your higher self is one of the ways that we put it, your god or goddess essence, your true self. Also, awakening your latent gifts in life, your life's purpose, the things that you really came here to do to make the world better and to live a better life. The life activation supports all of that. And in addition to it, because part of the process is the light, it's also letting go of the things that are blocking all of that. So letting go of the shadows, um, negativity, all the things that cause depression and anxiety. You start kicking those things up and purifying yourself of them. So you may have noticed already my plan for the video is to include a photo of my life activation wand as one of the images that I use, or a video perhaps. So that is my life activation wand. <clears throat> it is made of all natural materials. Handmade in, in Toronto by a trained wand maker in the lineage. It's 
specifically for me. We receive our life activation wands at Healers One Academy. In a very beautiful ceremony where your wand chooses you, and you receive it, and it feels like a piece of you has come home. There are a couple of things I want to talk about before we begin the meditation. One of them being a memory that came up for me a few minutes ago. Um, I don't remember what year it was, but like 2009 or 2010, I moved in with one of my high school friends. And he and I, for Lent, gave up leavened bread. So for 40 days, we didn't eat any bread that had yeast in it at all. This was right after my spiritual awakening. Um, I had the spiritual awakening, my very first one, that was pretty earth shattering. Right after he and I had decided I was going to move in with him, his other roommates were moving out because they weren't getting along. And uh, I was moving in. And that was when I had been questioning for a while if there was a God. And I remember writing in a journal that I had asking, is there a God? And then the response that I heard was, yes, there is a God and you are God. Every, like, we are all God, basically, was the I am God, you are God, we are all God. So we kind of, he and I kind of leaned in pretty hard to the whole trying to figure out uh, what it all meant and just playing with it. And that was one of the things we did, was gave up leavened bread for Lent. We had fun, I think. We made jokes about how he controlled the weather. Because it, it, honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um... Something else that came up today <clears throat> was this, I don't understand, you, you people, you people, all of you, <laughs> can be really reactive for no reason. Someone can be trying to give you information and you immediately, like, react as though they're doing something wrong. And I can't really figure this out because if someone's just trying to clarify something and you immediately put the blame back on them for something that isn't even wrong, what kind of situations are you creating in your own life? They're not good. You're creating lack of clarity, and lack of clarity is chaotic. So why do you want to create chaos in your own life and blame other people for it? So if one of your complaints is that people aren't being thoughtful enough, how thoughtful are you being? in your relationships with them. How considerate are you being if you're expecting everyone else to be considerate of you? It's annoying. <sighs> Life activation can open up your eyes to a lot of different things, and that's one of them. When I received my life activation, my eyes were opened to all the ways that I had been shrinking myself and putting up with just really bad behavior that wasn't honoring me as a person, where I wasn't pushing back and saying, hey, can you not be so awful to me in any way, shape, or form? So I was just letting people treat me whatever way they wanted to. It's not like I wasn't saying anything. My mom, when I was a kid, my mom would always try and get me to be 
more assertive or aggressive because she saw that I would just get kind of steamrolled and mistreated and she wanted me to be tougher. But I didn't really understand her perspective on it at the time because to me her version of tougher was like oh I have to turn into a bully to be stronger that's how I saw it and she didn't see it that way and maybe she was right maybe I was wrong but even today it happens and I'm just like pick your battles choose your battles I know that I know it's not like I don't know when people are not even aware that they're being rude or they're being too aggressive. And if I have to push back, I will. I can now. <clears throat> it's just I don't always have to because I don't need to create unnecessary stress. It's a lot easier if I just go, okay, thank you, and move on. And things just flow smoother when I don't create a ripple every time someone does something that bothers me or that communicates that they think less of me or they know less of me than they should. It really doesn't matter. It only matters when it matters. And you have to figure that out for yourself over time when it actually matters and when it doesn't. Because I've spent a lot of time trying to correct people just to make situations worse because they're not listening to begin with. And that's kind of what happened today. I was like trying to clarify something and it just kept getting worse. And I'm like, okay, so you're not even listening to me. You're just immediately defensive. This is really fun. I love this. And you can say maybe it was my tone. Maybe it was my tone. Maybe it was the fact that the person wasn't listening. Either way, doesn't matter. All I'm saying is that be aware if you're doing this to other people in your life because you're creating a situation that you don't even want to begin with. And the only way to change it is to accept the reality that you're doing it in the first place. So, anything else I should talk about before we get started? I'm learning to say no, no thank you, and uh, it's actually pretty exciting. I feel like the last month or so, I've been in an environment where I'm starting to learn to embrace and enjoy the fact that I have little quirks, and that they're okay, and that they're actually good things about me. So I really like that. I don't know why. It feels like a good thing to mention. Like, um, is there anything specific? Liking blue cheese over ranch. I don't know why. You would want to know that. Buffalo Brussels sprouts. If you've ever had buffalo Brussels sprouts, they're so good. <sighs> Anything else? The life activation, you know, all those meditations that I've done and the way it feels to be in the presence of someone who is a healer like me, initiated in the lineage of King Solomon, uh, we get to feel like that all the time. And we get to feel even better than that. <laughs> That's the benefit of being life activated and initiated is that the joy that we share with others, we can share it because we experience it ourselves and we are that way when no one else is around. So if you like being around me, if you feel like just my presence or our conversations leave you feeling better at some points, and then when I'm gone, that feeling disappears. It's because it's my energy, not yours. And it can be yours. I 
am a living example of what's possible, but you also have to invest the time, effort, and commitment into cultivating it for yourself, which again is possible, and I'm here to support you, and that's why I became all these things, life activation practitioner, healer, teacher, guide, Reiki practitioner, and everything else that I am, third step ritual master. If you're serious about healing, it'll be up to you to decide when you're ready to take those next steps. Just ask. If there's ever a class you want to take, just ask. I'm always happy to work with you to create that which works for you in terms of timing and space and all of that. Life activation. <laughs> oh, here's something. Uh, life activation is a $300 session. It's somewhere around an hour for the actual session, for the actual um, modality itself. And then I like to include an hour, 30 minutes before and after just to chat. It can be longer if it's your first session with me where we can chat beforehand longer just to gain clarity on some things. And then decompression time afterwards where you just sit and we, we relax together. We can chat or not chat. We can have tea. We can do whatever you want to do in that time. Um, so two hours at least for that. And two hours for $300 isn't that bad. It's a good price. And then, like I said, you get the purificado and cristalis. I also hand down a ritual to help you breathe and de-stress. Um, whenever the detoxification process, sometimes your heart will race or you'll get anxiety if you are prone to anxiety now. And it's a breathing exercise that helps with that. Um, there's a lot to the session, too, because it's life activation is an energy balancing we work in several different energetic bodies, part of your energetic field, energetic structures. And there's a removal of mm, negative energies as well. Balancing, magnetic. Yeah, it just brings your whole being into alignment and allows you to operate from that new state of alignment and clarity and peace. The other thing that goes well with the life activation is an aura healing. The aura healing removes negative energies from the first three layers of your aura and seals the holes that were created by those damaging entities. Usually if you get stuck on things or if you have, if you feel anxious or you feel depression come on or you're easily triggered, easily to anger, the aura healing is really good at clearing and clarifying that and eliminating those things, those triggers from your energetic structure. Uh, we like, I like to start with smaller things, and then if those smaller things don't get the issue right away, then you move on to bigger things if it's something you really want to work on. So like an aura healing is not going to clear a traumatic event from your energetic structure, but I do have tools that do that, like the hermetic soul retrieval. The aura healing would be more for like those things that you, that irritate you. They don't feel like they're deeply connected to a childhood wound. It could just be something that bothers you that you have no idea why it bothers you. And then we can work on clearing that out of your energy field first. And then if that 
because it will have some benefit. It's just it might not be. It might be like if you have skin cancer, removing the mole isn't necessarily going to eliminate the cancer if it's under the skin. So we start with the surface and then we move because it's not as life threatening as all of that usually. The life activation also helps you to make greater strides and leaps and bounds over barriers barriers to that which you truly desire. And there's more that I want to talk about on that, but I'm going to save that for another day. So for this meditation, I am going to be seated with my feet on the floor. I'm going to have my wand in my hand and the crystals. And the Peripricado and Crystallis will be in my lap. And you can go ahead and get yourself prepared. I do recommend putting your feet on the floor for this one. Back supported or not supported, that's up to you. And just begin by taking in a few deep breaths and sensing your connection with the life activation wand. Wherever you feel it in your body, if it's your mind, your heart, your belly, your feet, sensing your connection with this tool that desires to serve you in your growth, your progression, and you're moving onward and upward in life. I want you to remember that the life activation brings a piece of you home that divine spark is fanned and grows into a flame. That is what you are connecting with in this meditation, your divine spark. And again, wherever you feel it is good for you. As long as it's on that middle pillar of your being. Feet, belly, heart, head. Or all four. Or two or three. Feeling your connection with this divine spark. I want you to visualize a DNA strand at the level of one of those four places. And it can be blue and pink. Those are the two colors I want you to see. Intertwined and interlocked with each other. And I want you to imagine infusing this DNA with bright white light so that it glows. The blue and pink are still visible. They are just glowing now. And the DNA is rotating in a clockwise direction. And I want you to recognize that this DNA makes up your entire physical and spiritual energetic body. So envisioning it in your skin, every single strand of DNA lighting up. Blue and pink turning in a clockwise fashion, lighting up with this light all through your whole body. You may choose one place to start and it might seem random to you. But 
start there and allow it to spread through your entire physical body. Know thyself. Know thyself. Know thyself. Feeling the gate of knowledge opening at your heart. Inviting you to your own inner world. Through this process, you walk through the gate into the light. What do you see? The sands of eternal time? The pyramids? This bright white sun shining down on you. You feel the heat and the warmth of it all. In the distance, you see a large marketplace and temple surrounded by homes. You walk through the village streets. They are empty. Except for the one person who is keeping time before you open his door. He is following you on your journey. Imagining in this marketplace, there is something here for you to buy. Perhaps it is an animal. Some kind of gift. You grab the item and hand over your last dollar. To the counter. The 
and you feel a sense of peace immediately overcome you as you do this. You bring your item with you to the temple, and you offer it up as a sacrifice of gratitude for your entry into the temple. As you do this, you feel lighter. Not just lighter because you got rid of a physical object, but lighter because you provided an offering of gratitude for the opportunity to even be here to begin with. You know that everyone around you has already done the same thing. So you don't even look around to see who has given what or who has decided not to. You just make your way into the temple. And you find two doors, one marked men and the other marked women. You enter the one that corresponds with your birth, earth sex. The sex that you were born with. Uh -oh. As you enter through this door, you are handed a robe, asked to remove your shoes and all of your clothing. You are given sandals, all white. You change and you head into the first room, which is a private bath for the women only or men only. You step into the healing waters, letting go of all the things that carried you to this point that no longer serve you in your joy. You notice there are six more pools after this one. So you do the same thing, getting out of the first pool and getting into the second. Feeling yourself being cleansed by the waters, letting go, stretching your legs out all the way. Move on to the third pool and do the same thing. Noticing how each one is a bit different in appearance and feeling, perhaps even temperature. Moving on to the fourth pool, taking note of how the water appears. And feel. Moving on to pool number five, feeling yourself become lighter with each dip as if these layers are being removed from your being or clear, clarified. Moving on to pool six, if we haven't done that one yet. And if we have, moving into pool seven. Okay. Even if we hadn't done pool six before, it's spacious in pool seven now. Relaxing, letting go, appreciating the opportunity to be here in this temple. Your only job is to understand this ritual. It's 
Why is sacrifice so important? Why is letting go so important? Why is purification so important? I couldn't hear the answer. But it is okay to speak when allowed to yourself. You leave the seventh pool and you walk out a door into the light, into the sun, where there are many, many pools to choose from, men and women walking around in their robes. You allow yourself to connect with and be led by how you're feeling, who you want to be around, what energy you want to experience next. You are free to walk in this temple for as long as you'd like. Knowing that the healing waters will cleanse and clear away all that you desire and are ready to let go of. Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual pain Maybe that you are too ashamed to admit that you are feeling to begin with, but that are killing you and eating you up inside, turning you into a zombie. Or a chaotic mess. I want you to envision the color soft blue, like a baby blue. It can be wrapped around you. It can be part of the decoration of where you are. Just connecting with this soft baby blue energy. Infusing your whole being with this baby blue energy. Now connecting with the soft pink. Allowing yourself to do the same, infusing yourself with the soft pink energy. Seeing them wrap and infuse you in them as they twist together like the strands of the DNA, but larger like two soft blankets. Twisting together. Remembering your royal divine essence as a result of this process. Awakening to your true self and letting go of the shells that have been holding you, keeping you small. Allowing your god or goddess self to break through, to shine and take over your body. Whose body is it?
to your body. Look at yours. And with that, you can slowly and gently return to your body. The space that you are in, your energetic structure, being fully present and aware, opening your eyes, taking a few deep breaths. And enjoying the alchemy of connecting with the potential that life activation has to offer you. And when you're ready to go deeper and experience more, just let me know. This is a session that is always done in person because I can't use tools like this over the internet and I can't life activate you over the internet and I don't want to. So, yeah, there's no rush. It's always available. The price may go up. Honestly, a conversation that we had today about sacrifice made me want to raise my prices to $500 a life activation, but I'll give you some time before I do that. It will happen, though. And, um, yeah, just enjoy this energy. I hope you do great things with it. Remember your prompt if you'd like to create something, if you'd like to draw or put down or on paper or other medium or build something up to express your connection with this new divine essence or your new connection with this divine essence of who you are, please do that. It will only benefit you to do that. And uh, That's all for me. I love you. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you soon. Bye.